If you're just getting a CNC router, then there's a couple things that you want to pay attention to after you get your machine built and in position, like I have my alt mill CNC router here, which is also new. And that is you want to come up with a break in cycle and you want to check for square on the machine. IDCwoodcraft.com. I'm Garrett Frommy, CEO of IDC Woodcraft, the company that provides you with your CNC router bits. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I do a break-in cycle and how I check the machine for square. So I have my uh, alt mill CNC router here made by CNC Labs. It's a 48 inch by 48 inch work working area where you can uh, yeah, cut 48 inch by 48 inch projects. But of course we want to make sure the machine is in working order. So I have not put a spoil board on here yet, just my baseboard. So the first thing I want to do is break the machine in, make sure everything's working right. So I'm going to get to my computer here. And obviously when you have a new CNC router, the instructions are going to guide you through your first motions. And so I have already done that, but what you generally want to do is run your machine through the full range of axis uh, motions. That would be X and Y going to the back and forth and the Z going up and down. So you basically you're going to just bring it up. You're going to bring it down. You're going to move it back and forth. And I know all that's working. So. So the first thing I'm going to do is break my machine in. So I've created a program that will move the machine around its full range multiple times, as well as moving the Z up almost its full range. I like to keep the Z not going all the way down just because you want to make sure it's not going to hit anything. So it's a very simple program. If you have a 48 by 48 machine, and particularly the alt mill CNC router, I'm going to make this break in cycle program available to you. So I'm going to run this program once around its entire cycle, but it's going to do it 20 times to get everything broken in. So when I load up this, this break in cycle, which again, like I said, is available to you. You can download it from uh, the link down in the description of the video. We're going to load up my break in cycle. So, I got my 48 by 48 break-in cycle, and the machine is going to do lots of weird moves. So the first thing you want to do before you actually start the cycle is send the machine home and set your zeros at the home position. So we're going to send my machine home. This is a brand new machine, by the way, Alt Mill. It's made by a company called CNC Labs. It's a, like I said, 48 by 48. Um, very excited, very robust machine. So now we've sent everything home. I'm going to bring my Z down just a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit more than I want. We're going to zero out everything at the home position and we're going to start this break in cycle. So again, this is going to run around one full cycle. It's going to, I think, go that way, go up around here. It'll end up back over here and it'll go over there, do a diagonal run and a diagonal run, and then it'll start over again, do that 20 times. Then we're going to get into the spindle break in, and then we're going to check the machine for square. So let's run that through on the first cycle. I've already broken it in, so I just want you to see this. So you can see the Z is going up, and then it comes back down as it's moving back. And so it's coming around this way, full stroke of the machine, which is what you want your break-in cycle to do. Now it's going diagonally, and the Z is going down. It'll come back here, go diagonally that way. The Z is coming back up, now it's going back down. And it'll come back to the home position and start the whole cycle all over again. This cycle will run out for about 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop that. And... We're going to send the machine back home. The final thing you want to do when you're doing a break in is you want to make sure all your hardware is tight. So you just go back around and check all your bolts. And again, like I said, you oil things up, clean things off, what have you. The next thing you do is do a spindle break in. So th this is for the uh, non trim routers for when you actually have a, a true spindle, which is something I absolutely recommend that you get. If you have a trim router on your CNC router, spindles are much more accurate, uh, quieter, they run, they're designed to run for the long term, whereas the trim routers are not. So what the spindle break-in cycle does is it will turn the spindle on in a clockwise direction, which is the standard cutting 
direction, and it'll turn on to 7,500 RPMs. And it'll hold that for about four seconds, then it'll amp up to 15,000 RPMs, hold that for four seconds, then amp up to 20,000 RPMs, hold that for four seconds, then wind down to a stop, and then reverse. When it reverses, it will wind up to 7,500, 15,000, and 20,000, and then it'll go back and do it again the other direction. It'll do that 10 times. So here is how the spindle cycle works. Now, the first thing you wanna do is when you're doing a break-in on your spindle, is make sure you take all your tools off and collets off, all that stuff. And so you can put the camera close on the spindle. And I am going to start this. Like I said, it does it um, 10 times. I'm only gonna run through the full cycle once. You'll see it go up to 7,500, then it'll go up to 15,000, then to 20,000, stop, reverse, do the same thing, and then it'll start all over again. Here we go. So right now what the machine is doing is going home and then it's coming back to the middle it's just the way I've written a program, but I'm probably going to take that out. Uh, the spindle break-in cycle, again, is also available to you for free. I'll link that down below. So you see it's winding up to 7,500. And now it's got a dwell command in here. And it's holding it for four seconds. Now it's going up to 15,000 RPM. This is going in a clockwise direction. Um, it already went to the 1,700, so now it's going to reverse. I went through all three of them. I just uh, wasn't tracking it. And now it's going to reverse. And this is the M4 command to 7,500. There it is. And it'll come up to 15,000. And then it comes up to 20,000. After four seconds, it's going to stop. There's going to be a 10 second pause to give it enough, the spindle enough time to wind down to a stop. And you're going to see it's going to reverse over again, just getting close so they can see it. And here we go. So, your spindle is going to cycle like that 10 times. And I recommend this because you just want to make sure everything's working, broken in nicely before you start cutting. So, again, this spindle break in cycle, you can use it for any CNC that has a uh, spindle on it. It's a very basic G-code program, and I'll send instructions with that as well. That'll be down in the description as well. I'll combine the break-in cycle and the, the spindle break-in cycle uh, together, the motion break-in cycle. So the next thing we're going to do is do a square check. Once you've broken in your machine and your spindle, then it's time to do a square check. You don't want to do anything else to your machine until you actually check the square. And now here's what I generally do. I will drill four holes on a square. In this case, for the alt mill, a 38 by 38 square. And then when I drill those four holes, then I'll put uh, pins in those holes and I'll measure diagonally and make sure I'm square. So in this case, we are gonna be using the, the IDC Woodcraft 1 8 carbide drill. This is designed for CNC routers for the high speed of CNC routers, whereas other drills are not really uh, designed for that. The, the, the drill, a 1 8 drill, is much faster. And you can do your holes in one plunge, especially if you're making uh, cribbage board, which you get a lot of holes to make. Uh, you got to do a lot of peck drill and takes a long time. This, the, this lightning drill will certainly speed that up. IDC Woodcraft has that in a quarter inch as well. So basically, what we're going to do is get a 1 8 collet. For the machine which is provided with the alt mill they have a quarter inch collet a 1 8 collet and a 3 8 collet and if you don't have a 1 8 collet then you can always get the precision collet from idc woodcraft right here so we're just going to go with the 1 8 collet and then we're going to snap that in and you always want to make sure your collet snap into your nut so we'll put the drill in the 1 8 collet and bring it bring it up. Now the uh, CNC labs that makes the alt mill, they send all the tools you need. They sent these two wrenches with the machine. I painted the two sides that are, I'll be using for tightening up the collet nut. Get that tightened up. Doesn't have to be overly tight. And then the next thing we do is for this program, which is also going to be available to you if you want. Again, you'll send the machine to the back left corner, which is what we're going to do right now. And then we're going to remove everything off of the table. We're going to 
gonna make sure my X and Y are set to the back corner of the machine. You can write this yourself too. It's basically just a simple four hole program uh, that I've written with the uh, Vectric software. I will include that in this file as well so you can get this one as well. I'll just let you download all three of them. I'm gonna bring this forward. Now, one thing I want you to know is I don't have my spoil board on here yet. This is the base plate. I don't wanna check any square or anything with the spoil board on there because the spoil board takes a little bit of time and I want everything to be ready to go when the spoil board is there. So I could probe the tool or I can just use the touch method with a piece of paper, which is what I'm gonna do here. And we are going to start nursing this down. There we go, we're set up, we're gonna set our Z. Raise the Z back up. I'm gonna load the program. So I've got three different programs for squaring. One is a 38 inch by 38 inch square that it's gonna drill. Then I'll check my square and I'll show you how we do that. And if that's out of square, I'll make the adjustments and then we'll go with a 34 inch by 34 inch square, readjust if I need to, and then I'll go to the 30 inch by 30 inch square and I'll work my way down from there. So we're gonna load up that program. Um, again, you wanna make sure your machine is home and your X and Y is set at the home. This is for the alt mill, the programs that I've created. We're gonna load up the 38 by 38. I've never run this one before, so let's see what happens. Uh, it will go home first. <clears throat> now here's how fast the 1 8 lightning drill bit runs. It turns at 17,000 RPMs, which you can't do that with many tools. You're gonna to watch how fast that's gonna drill. Now it's spun up, it's got a dwell in it, and here we go. It's gonna go over there, it's gonna come back towards you, Adam, my camera guy. Now imagine how fast that would be for you with your uh, cribbage board making. So the lightning drills are available at IDC Woodcraft. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a 1 8 bit and I'm poking it in here. I'm gonna take it in the opposite corner. Stick it in there. Very accurate holes is what this drill bit does and has very minimal tear out. Uh, if, you, if you do some drilling, you'll, you'll know exactly what I mean. So my square is right now, let's see, for this one, it's a 53 and uh, 13 sixteenths. So now we're gonna switch over to the other side. And I think I just cut myself on my tool. 53 and 13 sixteenths. And we're at 53 and 13 sixteenths. Woo, baby. Okay. so. I'm already square. If you're out of square, for the for the alt mill, and the funny thing is, is when I do text, uh, uh, voice texting, and I say alt mill, it says oatmeal. <laughs> Just a little humorous thing. Anyway, I'll adjust the appropriate sensor on one side, and then rehome the machine, and then run the 34 by 34 cycle and check things again, and then move on from there until I got the machine squared up. So these are the things you should do when you get your CNC router set up. Number one is break the machine in. Number two is break the spindle in if you have one. And then number three, of course, is to do your square check. Now, before you do any of these things, you wanna make sure the machine's gonna move its full stroke of the machine and both X, Y, and Z before you do anything. Again, these programs that I made are available to you for free. There'll be a link down below in the description. You can download it and uh, there'll be instructions. If you don't have something like the alt mill, the instructions will tell you as well how to go ahead and set up your own squaring checks and what have you. So if this video is helpful, then give me a thumbs up. Comment down below if there's another technique that you use to do these different things, particularly squaring. And subscribe to the channel because I got a lot more videos for you as a CNC creator to help you get better at what you do. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. Drop by idcwoodcraft.com for your CNC router bits. Have a great day. idcwoodcraft.com And Julianne? Yes? Do you have a band-aid?
I do. I, Why? I cut myself on a router bit. Oh, dear. <laughs> that hurts. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you poor thing. You poor dear. Mommy. 